Hi, I'm Jin, and today I'm going to talk about Node.js C++ add-ons. So what is an add-on? Um, according to Node.js docs, Node.js add-ons are dynamically linked shared objects written in C or C++ that can be loaded into Node.js using the require function and used just as if they were in ordinary Node.js module. So some key points from this definition are add-ons are written in C++, and as we've learned, Node.js runs on the V8 JavaScript engine. And V8 is written in C++, so with add-ons, we can write code that interacts directly with V8 in its own language. And we can require add-ons in just like any other module we've been using. So why would you want to use add-ons? Some of the advantages include, first of all, performance. So if you're writing an app that requires a lot of computation and number crunching, the performance will probably be faster using C++. You can also hook into lower level APIs, including the operating system. And you can also have access to C++ libraries. And there are a wider range of libraries available in C++. And uh, specifically, there are a lot of like math and science libraries that you can use. So let's go through the process of creating an add-on. First of all, you'll need some knowledge of some components and APIs that Node uses. One of them is V8, um, which, as we know, compiles and executes JavaScript for Node. Also, there's a C library called libuv, which Node uses to implement its event loop and other asynchronous behavior. So if you're writing a callback function in your add-on, you're going to want to use libuv. Also, Node has internal C++ APIs that add-ons can use as well. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about these libraries and APIs, um, but I've provided a link to the docs on this slide if you want to look into them more. So let's go through the setup. First of all, you'll need to install Xcode on your computer. Then you're going to write a CC file. Um, and I'll walk through an example of this later. You're also, you're also going to use a node module called NodeUIP, and you just need to npm install it. This is going to compile, compile your add-on into machine code. And in order to use NodeUIP, you also need a binding.gyp file. It's a very short file, just a few lines of code. And what this is going to do um, is going to help NodeUIP compile the binding file, or NodeUIP to compile the add-on file. Um, so all you need to write is the target name, which is the name you'll use to require the module, and also the source, which is the name of the CC file. And then once you've done that, your binding file is ready, and all you need to do is run node gyp configure build in your terminal, and then you can use your add-on. So then you'll just require your add-on in any of your JavaScript files, like so, and then your add-on is ready to use. So let's walk through a quick example of a CC file. So here, um, I've written a, just a short C++ add-on. On line three, um, I'm declaring a function called sum. And here, you can see this is related to V8. So what V8 function callback info does is it gives us access to the arguments that were called in the function within the JavaScript file. And then we can use those arguments within this function. Um, V8 isolate, that gives us um, access to the scope of our JavaScript file. And then line 6 through 10, this looks very similar to JavaScript. And this is the main part of the function. Um, one key difference is that in C++, you need to declare the types of your variables. So for example, here we have an integer. On line 7, we have two doubles, which are decimals. And all I'm doing is running a for loop and adding b to a a lot of times. So this seems like kind of a con contrived example. Um, but what I want to show later is basically that the, if you're doing a lot of computation, the performance of C++ is a lot faster. So after we add b to a like 100 million times, um, <laughs> we're going to get a total, a total value for a. And then we're going to change it into a v8 data number type. Once we've done that, we can then return our value to our JavaScript file. So that's the whole function. And then lines 17 through 21, this is something you're going to write in all of your add-ons. 
basically what this this does is export your method just like module.exports so here we have a v8 object called exports and we're setting a method on the exports called sum and it's equal to the sum function above so once you've done that you need to compile this add-on so I'll go to the terminal and I'll run no GYP configure build at the end if it says okay that means everything ran correctly and then in your folder you'll see a build folder and within that there's an add-on dot node so this is your add-on compiled into machine code it looks pretty cool um, so once you've done that you can require in your add-on in your JavaScript so I've written a short JavaScript file and in here on line one I've required in the add-on and then we can use it I've also written a JavaScript function that does the same thing as our C++ sum function and on line 13 I'm going to run the add-on C++, the C++ add-on sum function and also the JavaScript sum function and I'm going to measure how much time each of those take and kind of compare C++ versus JavaScript. So all I have to do is run node example. So the C++ function took 100 milliseconds and the JavaScript function took about 1600 milliseconds. So the C++ was about a, more than 10 times faster. So we can try that again and just see that it's consistent. I'm going to increase the iterations by a factor of 10 on each. And when you edit your CC file, you need to build it again. So I will run no GYP configure build. Everything went OK, so then I can run node example. So this time C++ took about 1400 milliseconds, so that's about 10 times fast, 10 times slower, which is what we would expect. And the JavaScript <laughs> function is taking a lot longer. It should take about 16,000 milliseconds, yeah? Okay, so yeah, it's a lot slower. Um, so that's how you create an add-on and how you would want to use it. I wanted to talk a little bit about Node and how it uses C++. So here is the Node.js repository on GitHub and this is the fs.js file which is for the file system module in Node. So as you can see this is all written in JavaScript and you can also see some familiar methods like fs.read file. So all of this is written in JavaScript but if you look on line 11 we have this binding and what this does is it gives us a reference to C++ bindings in another file which we can use within this file which is very similar to the idea of C++ add-ons right you're requiring in C++ functionality that you can use within this file so if you look at that file this is all written in C++ there's V8 there's also libuv and so this is part of the reason why node runs uh, a lot faster and its performance is a lot better is because it is using C++ within the code and that's part of the reason why a lot of companies now like LinkedIn, PayPal and Walmart are all using node and an interesting story I think Ben talked about this a little when he was introducing node um, but Walmart uses Node.js and they launched their use of Node.js in 2013 on Black Friday which is the busiest shopping period of the year and so they put all of their mobile traffic through Node.js on Black Friday and one of the engineers at Walmart named Aaron Hammer he tweeted this picture which shows the percent of CPU utilization um, for Walmart and so you can see that there are over 200 million users and this line shows um, kind of the CPU use is pretty constant and then when they introduce Node um, the performance becomes a lot faster so that's just kind of an interesting example of how Node and C++ can improve performance so we've talked about what an add-on is its advantages how to create an add-on 
and how Node itself has a lot of built-in C++. I've provided some links if you're interested in learning more about C++ add-ons. And that's all. Thank you very much.